class, this class is going to be Fundamentals of Hypocrisy. Fundamentals of Hypocrisy, all right? So let's open up with uh, Romans chapter 5, verse, well, actually, go to, uh, I'd say, pull up that dictionary, I mean, the uh, definition for me, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy, if you could, please. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. All right, it says, a feigning to be what one is not or to believe what one does not. So, uh, pull up the, the next one where it says fame, the next tab. So, this is fame. It says to give a false appearance. Scroll down. So, it says to assert as if true or pretend. So, invent or imagine, right? So, pretty much a lot, right? So, let's uh, go back to hypocrisy again. So it says, feign it to be what one is not or to believe what one does not. All right, so let's uh, open up with Romans chapter 5, verse 2. So the name of this class is Fundamentals of Hypocrisy. We're going to go to some of the symptoms of hypocrisy. So a lot of us, you know, sometimes we don't think that we deal with this hypocrisy spirit. But some of us, we have those tendencies in us, whether we know it or not. So let's go ahead and get into that and see what see and if you see if you see it, just correct it. Make sure you don't don't just blow it off. Acknowledge it and make sure you get the right medicine so you can be able to correct it. All right. So Romans chapter five verse two. The book of Romans chapter five and verse two, by whom also we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Verse three. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So it says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So I brought this scripture out because a lot of times when we're going to go through this article, it gives you signs to let you know that if a person is being a hypocrite or not, right? And so sometimes we, we, we want to know, how, how can I be spiritual? You know, we always hear about the bishop or the deacons or the different captains, you know, they spiritual, they can read what's going on with a person, right? So oftentimes we want to have those uh, spiritual gifts, right? But if you read verse 3 again. Verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. So we glory in tribulations. So when tribulations come, so let's say like if it's a congregational tribulation, right? If you, uh, when that, that can be one thing, or if you in the body and you see a person's going through different tribulations you see how they uh how they uh react to certain things like different sins or how they overcome it you'll understand like hmm i understand this spirit now what they battle and all that so forth read read verse three again and not only so but we glory in tribulations also so remember that what i had just said read Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So if you have, if you, if you understand what people go through and what you go through, it's going to work. Your, it's going to help you build patience. Read. And patience. Verse 4. Verse 4. And patience, experience. So then that's when after the patience come, you'll be able to have that experience. So that's how you'll be able to see signs of somebody being a hypocrite. Signs of somebody uh, being covetous or signs of somebody is going through, uh, you know, a killer or a thief, things like that. You'll be able to see these things when you examine everyone and examine yourself as well because it's going to help you build. Uh, the tribulation is going to come and help you build patience and then the experience. Read. And experience hope. All praise. So go to First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. The book of First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. So it says in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. So we're going to see, we're going to get into, when we keep reading, it's going to give you examples of how these people, what their characteristics, how they're going to depart from the faith. Read. Giving heed to seducing spirits uh -huh. and doctrines of devils. So we already see that now. We see that now with Christianity, Islam, all these different religions. Even even uh, with all these different camps, right. we see that right. when all these the seducing spirits, where you you want you got any kind of spirit on you, if you got a covetous spirit, if you want to have multiple wives, there's a camp out there for you. You want to smoke weed, you believe other nations can be saved, right? Yeah. It's a it's a camp for every sin that you wanna that that you wanna be in. There's a camp for it. 
3, verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Remember, some shall depart from the faith, but then verse 2 it says, speaking lies in hypocrisy. So when you speak lies in hypocrisy, you departing from the faith. Right. You speak any kind of lies or you being any kind of hypocrite, you are departing from the faith. Read. Having their conscience seared with a hot, with a hot iron. So your conscience is going to be seared with a hot iron. So you're just going to be stuck in being a hypocrite. You're just going to be happy being a hypocrite, right? So you think about that. Some of the, like, we think about hypocrisy, like, right? You think about disloyalty, let's say betrayal or treachery, right? Those are some of the things that you should possibly think about, right, dealing with this. So that's something you should try to avoid, all right? So go to uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 1. Luke chapter 12, verse 1. The book of Luke, chapter 12 and verse 1. In the meantime, when there were gathered together an in innumerable multitude of people, and in, in so much that they trolled one upon another, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware ye of the leaven of the Pharisees. All right, so it says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. So you understand that when you... It's not just one thing that the Pharisees was doing. They had multiple kinds of sins that they were in. But it says, beware of the leaven of Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Right. All that they were doing was hypocrisy. It was lies. Right. Read. Which is hypocrisy. Verse 2. For there is nothing covered. And then it goes into, for there is nothing covered. Read. That shall not be revealed. Neither hid. That shall not be known. You want to why it says that? Because you're going to be able to see those signs if that person's been a hypocrite or not. Right. Every, every, even also, even every sin that somebody going through, the most high is going to reveal it. Right. You see tendencies with certain people that, dang. After a while, you know, you see somebody going through something, but it don't click in your mind. But later on, once the judgment come or they uh do something stupid and it comes out, you be like, damn, why didn't I think of that? Right? Like, why didn't it click in my mind the first thing that they had did? Right? That's also letting you know that that was a sign. And now you know that tribulation, whatever they was going through, now you have that patience, and then you have that experience. Right. So now you know to apply to certain people. If you see somebody going through something, you see that. If you see somebody that's they're coming to the truth now, and uh, they have that same sign that's that the other person that you saw was doing that BS, right? You're going to be able to help them out, give them that correct medicine. Right. So go to, uh, finish reading, finish reading. Verse 3. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. So whatever the Pharisees, what all they was doing, what was spoken in darkness, it shall come to light, right? So a lot of times we think about being a hypocrite, you know, when we uh say we're going to do something, but then don't do it, right? That's letting you know that whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. It's going to come to light. It's going to show, if you say you're going to do something, you don't do it. It's going to come to light. People are going to see and acknowledge that you just all talk. Right. Right? Read. And that which ye have spoken in the ear, in clauses, so shall be proclaimed upon the housetop. All right, go to Job chapter 13, verse 16. Job chapter 13, verse 16. The book of Job chapter 13 and verse 16. He also shall be my salvation. For a hip hypocrite shall not come before him. So if you understand that, the Most High God is our salvation. But then it says a hypocrite shall not come before him. Right. A hypocrite will never stand before the Most High God, which means what? You're going to be dead right. when Christ comes back. Just a hypocrite? A hypocrite? You know, you might think like, damn, you know, it's just, uh, just a hypocrite. But let's, we're going to dive into it and see. Why you if you if you have any kind of these characteristics, why you're not gonna be able to stand before the most high God? Uh IT, pull up that article for me. Alright. Uh make sure y'all don't scroll down a lot either. I'm gonna do one thing at a time. You can we'll go ahead and read it, sir. Eight signs that can help you distinguish a sincere person from a hypocrite. So it's gonna give you uh a sincere person or a hypocrite, right? So go ahead. Distinguish. Distinguishing an honest person from a liar is not so difficult. There are signs that can easily that can easily tell you who who is who. 
You just need to be really attentive. Attentive. So you understand that it says distinguish an honest person from a liar is not diff- not so difficult. You know, sometimes it could be difficult for some people if they're not paying attention. But it says there are signs that can easily tell you who is who. You just need to be really attentive, which means paying attention. You just got to pay attention to the signs. And so, Lord's willing, y'all learn something from these signs, and you'll be able to see what if somebody is a liar or a hypocrite. So on the left is a hypocrite person, right? It says they only respect those who have power. And it says a sincere person, they respect to, they, they're they respectful to everyone, All right? So a lot of times, we actually see this a lot. Right. We see this right. a lot. And so that's a sign of being a hypocrite. And so a lot of people didn't, you know, they didn't think that, but it, it is what it is. It's letting you know that you are a hypocrite. Why? Because you have respect for just a leader or a camp or just a person that's in a high authority compared to the person right next to you. Right. A lot of times, even even within the camp, right, we have person that come in just uh, uh, a few months, right, that's been with us a few months but don't have any kind of respect for them. They're like, you act like they're beneath you or something. But it says a sincere person is going to be respectful to everyone, right? So go to uh, Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. The book of Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10. Remember, they only respect those who have power. Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? So it's asking you, asking, do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? Ask yourself, are you just trying to seek and please men? Are you just trying to uh take care of them, make sure they're straight, but not uh, taking care of your brother that's right next to you? Right? Read. For if, for if I yet please men. So if you please men, if, th- if this is you, then what? I should not be the servant of Christ. So if I'm just a pleaser of man, I just I just do what someone else just say. You know, I just want to uh, make sure they stray, or I just want to uh, uh, look good in their eyes. It says I should not be a servant of Christ. John chapter twelve verse forty two. John chapter twelve verse forty two. The book of John chapter twelve and verse forty two. You know when you also when you uh. Uh, just a pleaser of men. Sometimes you just want to, you really just serve, you serve, you serving that person. Right. You're not really serving the most high God. Mm-hmm. It's really idolatry. Right. If you think about it, you just serving, serving somebody else, another person, your own brother, but you don't want to serve the most high God. Read. The book of John chapter 12 and verse 42. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. Man, if you think about it, a lot of us we want to be pleasers of men to where we just we, we just love the benefits of being pleasing that person, right? Right. We don't want to just sacrifice and, and live live truthfully, right? So when we come into this truth, of course, you know we have to deny certain things, cast stuff off, right? We have to become a new creature. That's what you're doing. But now when you come into the truth, you want to be a pleaser of man? Nah, you shouldn't roll like that. Remember, you're not going to be a servant of Christ. Read. Verse 43. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. So how can you love the praise of men more than the praise of God? Like, what can man do for you? What can man do for you? Just give you some money? Right. Give you a house or like uh, different material things that only last for so long. Right. But the most high God can give you eternal life. Count the cost. Weigh out the balance. See what's better for you. It's obviously the most high God got something better for you. Right. Sirach chapter 13 verse 21. Ecclesiastes chapter 13 and verse 21. A rich man beginning to fall is held up of his friends. But a poor man being down is thrust also away by his friends. So if you... if it, this right here is also getting to one of the other uh, fundamentals of being a hypocrite. But uh, let's focus on this first one still. Remember, the, they only respect those who have power. Read that again, verse 21 again. Verse 21. A rich man beginning to, to fall 
is held up of his friends. Why? Why when a, a rich man or someone that has power, it, once they begin to fall, is held by his friends? Because his friends, when they see benefits, they already know right. that they can get something from that person. Right. But it says, but a poor man being down is thrust away by his friends. So let's apply that to uh, just a camp right now, like mm-hmm. or, or in the truth, right? Right. So let's say if a person, you know, is an officer of 50 or 80 or, or a captain of 100, right? Uh, if they call you, say if they stuck on a road or whatever, they go, they call you, you stop everything you're doing to go help that person, right? You sacrifice all your time just to help that person. You spend your last drop of your, that's in your account. You help that person, right? But it says, but a poor man being down is thrust away by his friends. If someone is like maybe a brother six months or a soldier, anything like that, they need help or something like that. They could be out there for a few hours. That just happened recently. That just happened. Yeah. That happened recently. Yeah. A brother was out, out uh, car messed up or whatever. Something happened, and he was out there for a few hours. A few hours, but if it was Officer Fifty, if it was Officer Manual, anything, any uh, Officer Ezra, brothers would drop everything they're doing to try to help him out, help them out. But your own brother, hey, if you think about it. Regeneration, right? All the prophecies come back, but you don't know who they are. Right. You don't know who they are. You don't know if that person that's, that came in right after you, maybe just one month in, or just they first time coming, you don't know who they are. Right. You don't know who they are, but you want to uh, disrespect them or don't look out for them. Right? Verse 22. When a rich man is fallen, he has many helpers. He speaketh things not to be spoken, and yet men justify him. Man, man, man. <laughs> and yet men justify him when he speaks certain things. You already know this person like, man, what the hell are you talking I'm about? about yeah. Right. But then, really, really, we don't even think it through all the way. Like, okay, he said that? Mm. Okay. I guess it's right. I guess it's righteous. Right? Because he said it. Mm. All right, read that again. When a rich man is fallen, he hath many helpers. He speaketh things not to be spoken, and yet men justify him. The poor man slip. The poor man slip. If a poor man just slip and say one little thing, one little wrong thing, right? Read. And yet they rebuke him too. Nigga, what you doing? <laughs> like you go off on that brother just for doing one little slip up, right? But if it was somebody else, you wouldn't you wouldn't correct them. He wouldn't have helped them out, read. He spake wisely and could have no place. Read. When a rich man speaketh, every man holdeth his tongue. Hey, and when, when a lot of people, uh, people of renown speak, a lot of people want to just, just listen to them like, oh, what does that person have to say? How do I get there, right? Because right. they got riches of the world. But when a poor man, when they got riches of the wisdom, a lot of people don't want to be hearing that BS. They don't want to hear it. They think it's just BS, right? Right. Read. And look what he said. They extol it to the clouds. They think, oh, he did it. He he has the magic equation to where I'll be able to have a million dollars, right? Or he has he was able to get there, I can do it too, right? Let me listen to him so I can I can get to where I that's where I want to be, right? Three. But if the poor man speak, they say, What fellow is this? Who is this nigga? <laughs> right? Who is this uh, why are you coming over here up in our circle, right? Just saying some uh, saying something. Read. And if he stumble, they will help to overthrow him. Man, if he they help overthrow him. Yeah, he gonna, he, they going to help to overthrow him. Let's join in together. Let's get this nigga out of here, right? Mm. Go, uh, go back to the article. They criticize others to look better when compared to them. Mm-hmm. It's sincere. They admire others and praise them. They criticize others to look better when compared to them. They admire others and praise them. So let's say if you criticize someone so you can look better when you compare when you compare yourself and all that, you exalting your own self. You're being selfish to where you want to just focus on you yourself, but you're not worried about your own brother, the person that's just like you. 
Right. right? The person that has Christ in uh, Christ in them. You don't want you you, you want to criticize and say every, every type of e- any type of evil against them. You speak it. Right? But it says the positive, it says they admired others and praised them. So a righteous person will look at everybody and see what what kind of member they are in the body. Right. What are they good at? What are they talents? And how can they help the body? Right. They don't look down upon a person just because they they only can uh sweep the floor, right? right? Right. Or if they have a certain disability, you you gonna look past that and see Christ in them, mm-hmm. right? So go to uh, Sirach chapter fourteen verse five. Sirach chapter fourteen verse five. The book of Sirach chapter fourteen and verse five. He that it, he that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? So if you have a person, right? Say if I'm evil to myself, right? I'm doing any type of wickedness, and I'm I don't care about what I'm going through, right? I just stealing, killing, doing all types of things, right? It says, to whom will he be good? If a person is already evil to himself, why would he be? Why would he do any kind of good for you, right? right? If he can't, if I can't do good for myself, why? Why would I want to uh, do good for you? It don't make sense. Read. He shall not take pleasure in his goods. Right. So go. Uh, you have some on this. Uh, this. All right. Go back to the article for me, real quick. I did kind of have something like what you were just saying about the sincere said that they will praise uh, the others, right? So, like you were saying, um, basically what came to mind was, uh, I believe that's Romans 12, about acknowledging the different people uh, within the body. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, just because you're not a beast on the streets, you know what I'm saying, that don't take away, but you're still a prophet. Right. You know, you still doing wh- whatever office that you in, that's what you want to go hard at. You know what I'm saying? You want to try your best. Mm-hmm. All right? Because that person that's going hard on the streets, he probably can't edit the video that he just did going hard on the streets. So guess what? You still need it. Mm-hmm. Right. That's all. Right. All praise. So go pull up the article again for me, IT. All right. So, yeah, yeah. Hypocritical people. Scroll down. They gossip all the time. That's the hypocritical people, right? But sensitive people, they express their own opinion. So you might ask yourself, how does this relate to being a hypocrite, them gossiping all the time, right? So say if someone is gossiping about another person, right? Say like, Isaiah didn't go, uh, Isaiah didn't do this, right? Isaiah didn't go to uh, Atlanta with us. Or some some BS, any kind of BS, right? But then you didn't do it yourself. That's being a hypocrite. So a lot of pe- a lot of times we di- we deal with this in the body. A lot of times, a lot of people are gossipers. They whispers. They won't always want to tell bad things like that. Right. That's part of being a hypocrite, right? Because if it, 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 even if you do it, you wouldn't want nobody else doing it to you. Right. What kind of sense does it make? You still being a hypocrite. So a lot of us, we have this right here. A lot, a lot of us gossip. And so this is something that we need to get rid of. Sirach chapter 5, verse 9. Sirach chapter 5, verse 9. The book of Sirach or Ecclesiastes, chapter 5 and verse 9. Win on not with every wind, and go not in, in, into every way. So it says, win on not with every wind, go not to every way. So a lot of times, think about this like with a whisperer, right? You hear you hear a different a bunch of BS, different lies, things like that. You can hear it from every everywhere, right? It's kinda like the wind it comes from anywhere, north, east, south, west, wherever. It's coming. Right? But it says, When no not with every wind, go not into every way. So with, with it, just just because you hear something, don't react to it. You know, this is this is something that a lot of us, you know, we we have that issue too, to where if you hear something, a lot of times we wanna react to it. We wanna just go with it and be like, What? nigga did that she did what right mm-hmm. read for so does the sinner that hath a double tongue mm. so a sinner that have a double tongue so this person is gonna be speaking good things then bad things right right they're gonna gossip and then they ain't gonna gossip right read be steadfast in thy understanding and let thy word be the same so dealing with this for so 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 you won't go into every way. It says you have to be steadfast in your understanding. Right. You have to know what you what this bo- this book is about, what laws what the laws are about, and know that 
when you hear all that BS gossip and things like that, don't react to it. Right. Don't react to it. You you wanna know how you react to it? You could react to it by what? Blasting. Rebuking. Rebuking. <laughs> that's how that's how you react to it. Right. You don't you don't you don't wanna react to it by just going with it, uh putting wood on that fire, right? You don't want to uh, put gas on that fire. You don't want to uh, flame and spark it up even more, right? right? But see, that's 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 that sincere person. Like I said, they was going to express their own opinion, even though it's not opinionated. They expressing the words out of the Bible. So you're not found a hypocrite when you, in the midst of that, you seeing somebody gossiping and you choose to to blast them, as you said. Mm-hmm. Right, and it's just like yeah, just like if it, uh, if you gonna have your own opinion. You gonna know if a righteous person gonna have their own opinion, they gonna know that you gonna know that that person is doing the same. Right. I'm not gonna say uh, Isaiah stop uh stealing when I'm stealing, right? right. I, if I, if I'm righteous, I'm not gonna be stealing. And I know he's stealing. I'm gonna tell him about it. I'm gonna have my opinion about it, right? Read, keep reading. Verse eleven: Be swift to hear, and let thy life be sincere, and with patience give answer. Uh huh. If thou hast understanding, answer thy neighbor. If not, lay thy hand upon thy mouth. Sometimes a lot of us, you know, we always want to just talk or whatever. You know, if you don't have anything good to say, I know I heard this all the time back in the world. You have don't have anything good to say. Don't say it all, right? Right. Lay your hand upon your mouth. Read. Honor and shame is in talk. So it says honor and shame is in talk. So these two things can come out of the mouth, honor and shame. Which one are you doing? Are is your mouth full of honor or is it full of shame? Are you going to be like the Pharisees when they was hypocrites all the time, just talking and not doing nothing? Read. And the tongue of man is his fault. But it says the tongue of man is his fault. So your, your own, you, you falling by your own tongue, right. what you say. You know that person was being shameful. Read. Be not called a whisper. Be not called a what? A whisper. Uh huh. And lie not in wait with thy tongue, mm-hmm. for a foul shame, for a foul shame is upon the thief, and an evil condemnation upon the double tongue. Be not ignorant of anything, in a great manner or small. So be not ignorant in this because your your mouth is it's, it's pretty much small, but your tongue right. is pretty much small, but. It, it it has damage. It can do damage. Your right. tongue, your mouth. Speaking lies, you can do damage. You think about it in history, all the things that uh happened with just uh what's the the brother uh yeah Emmett Till right? Just uh whistling was whistling right? Mm-hmm. Whistle. So man, your tongue. You need to mind your tongue. Sirach chapter twenty one verse twenty eight. Book of Sirach, chapter 21 and verse 28. 28. But if, you, if not, you're going to see the sign with that person if that person's been a hypocrite, right? This is a sign, gossiping. This is a sign of being a hypocrite, so understand that. Sirach, chapter 21, verse 28. 28 and verse, tw- no, 21 and verse 28. A whisperer defileth his own soul, and he is hated wheresoever he dwelleth. A whisperer defileth his own soul. You're destroying yourself if you have this trait. You are literally destroying yourself. You are making yourself fall on your own just by your dang mouth. You let your mouth destroy you, yourself. And it says, and it's hated whatsoever he dwelleth. So guess what? And it's hated whatsoever he dwelleth. So whatever you see that person, they got a, sta- they got a stain on their name, right? right? They got a blot. Right. You see him, you're like, oh, <laughs> that's that nigga. So, yeah, I know not to say nothing around him because right. why? He's gonna go back and tell it, right? right? You gonna you gonna see that? Go back to the article for me, please. It. All right, hypocritical people it says they help people if it's profitable for them. Sincere people, uh. They selflessly perform good deeds. Mm, mm, mm. We see this a lot. So let's say they help people if it's profitable for him, for them. So like I said earlier, this is also going to be selfish. 
All right, because you don't, you wouldn't want this person to do this to you. This is a sign of being a hypocrite. All right, Sirach chapter six verse eight. Sirach chapter six verse eight. Y'all read this before. This is goes good with this part of the article, right? Sirach chapter six verse eight. The book of Sirach chapter six and verse eight. Let's start at seven. Verse seven. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. Don't be quick to call, claim, say that he your friend. Right. Don't be quick to do that. You don't know this person. Like they say, it's it's if you see a person is every Sabbath, and it, it's just fifty two uh, fifty two Sabbaths in a year. Right. <laughs> and you say you've been knowing that person for a year. You really only you know, know him fifty two fifty two days. Right. Like, come on now. Don't be hasty to credit somebody. Read. For some man is a friend for his own occasion and would not abide in the day of trouble. So it says some man is a friend for his own occasion and would not abide in the day of trouble. So we think about that with the scriptures we read earlier. Dealing with the rich man. If right. the people that was around the rich man, his friends, they was always there, right? Because they had what? They was a friend for their own occasion. Right. But if a poor man... They ain't going to be there for him. So why? Why it says this right here in the verse, uh, chapter 6, verse 8. For some man is a friend of for his own occasion. It will not abide in the day of trouble. It's letting you know that if you poor or whatever, you, you, you ain't really have no rank or something like that. You got friends around you. Make sure you credit them. Make sure that they're really there for you. Right? Right. right. But if not, you're going to see that they ain't going to be there for you when in, in the day of your trouble. Read. Verse 9. Yep. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. Uh-huh. Read. Again, some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. Just what we've just been talking about, read. But in thy prosperity, he will be as thyself. Oh, master, you sick? <laughs> I'm sick to crack. <laughs> you going through that? Oh, okay. All right. So hey, hey, I don't know. We watch. I remember watching movies, right? And uh, you see, you have a person that built the business and whatever, and then they be like, they try to include themselves. They be like, uh, we. They be like, what we gonna do? Yeah. What we, we gonna do, yeah. like with the business or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. What you mean we? we. <laughs> right? Hey, it's just an example, right? But think about it, man. Read. And we'll be bold over thy servant. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. Read. Verse twelve. If thou be brought low, he will be against thee, and will hide himself from thy face. Hey, you know, that's crazy, too. We see that also, like, with uh, different rappers, right? Once they had that hit single or whatever, then after maybe a year or two, they go on broke, and all the people around them, that whole team, they went against them. They ain't worried about them. They ain't messing with them no more. Right. It's the same thing. They, 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 they was hasty to credit that person, right? Just because you, you been with that person, maybe growing up with them, that don't mean that that person's still going to be down for you, right? Right, right. A lot of people are friends for their own occasion. So understand that. Uh, go back to the article for me. So a lot of times, like we was just going over, it's a lot of people are there just for, for profit. Just for profit, and that's, that's being selfish. That is being selfish, and you see that with people today. And that's being a sign of a hypocrite, right? Because a lot of times we we try to teach that you don't need to be a hypocrite. We teach uh, be friendly with each other, do good to your neighbor, whatever. But that ain't that's that's being a hypocrite, right? So the next one it says uh, they always sing their own praises, mm -hmm. but then it says a right a good person they don't boast about their success, right? Mm -hmm. So go to Psalm chapter ten verse three. Book of Psalms, chapter 10 and verse 3. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorred. So it says, for the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire. So whatever comes to your mind, you're going to boast about it, right? right? Especially if it's about you. you can be like, oh, I did this for the body. Oh, I donated uh, $1,000 for the body. I donated, right. donated $2,000, $3,000. You're going to boast that, right? 
But it says, uh, for the wicked boasts of, of his heart's desire, and blessed the covetous whom the Lord hateth, well, abhorreth. So you doing that, the Most High hates you. Right. Remember, if, you, if you're a hypocrite, you can't stand before the Most High God. Go to Psalm chapter 94, verse 3. Psalm chapter 94, verse 3. Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long shall the wicked triumph? Right? How long the wicked gonna be going through their prosperity? Right? This is some of the things that we ask today. Right? Why the hell are everybody going through this wickedness? You see people uh messing with different women, got all this money, selling drugs. How long will this keep going on? Read. How long shall they other and speak hard words, and all the workers of iniquity boast themselves? Right? How long is this gonna keep going on? When, when are they going to stop standing before the Most High God and just get slaughtered when they get put to death? How long is this going to go on? If you're a hypocrite, this is what's going to happen to you. You you already got judgment. Your judgment is coming. Death is coming. Read. Um, actually, go to Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. The book of so Pro- these people just boast themselves all the time, right? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 7. They always want to sing praises about themselves. They're always selfish, right? They only care for themselves, not anybody else, right? They will always want acknowledgement, read. The book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 7. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So it says, be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. So this is evil when you are wise in your own eyes. When you boasting, right? When you just want to do your own thing, you don't want to follow up the most high God. When you being selfish, that's evil. It says, be not wise in our own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Depart from it, especially if this is you. You have this characteristics. Characteristic. Depart from it. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 12. The book of Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 12. There is a generation that is pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. So if you, let's say you think about it, right? There's a generation that is pure in their own eyes. So if I say that I'm doing something to where I'm in, like I'm doing, I think I'm doing the right thing, right? Like the Pharisees, right? They think right. they were doing the right thing. Right. But it says, uh, and yet it's not washed from their filthiness. Right. That's being a hypocrite. They're also in denial what we went, went over last time when I talked. Right? It says there are a generation that appear in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. They're hypocrites, right? Uh, they're going to obviously try to teach you certain things to where you're doing the wrong thing, but they're not going to do it themselves. They haven't been washed from their own filthiness. They've been a hypocrite, they've been a hypocrite themselves. Matthew chapter 23, verse 27. Matthew chapter 23, verse 27. The book of Matthew chapter 23. And verse 27. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Woe unto you, which means destruction unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Read, read. Hypocrites. So it says hypocrites right after that. Right. And that, that was just a sentence right there. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. Right. For just being hypocrites, destruction is coming. Read. For ye are like unto white sepulchres. 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 Which indeed appear beautiful outward. So you, they appear beautiful outward, right? Oh, you see this person, they doing certain things to where, oh, yeah, look at that person, right? They doing the right thing, right? Right? You see that? You see that with people today. And they speak lies, different things like that. You, you already know that, like, a lot of, some of us in the congregation, you see somebody next to you, and you be like, you know that person full of, uh, dong, right? <laughs> you know that, you know they full of it. But when they're around the body or whatever, everything cool, right? That's like also in our marriage. You know, sometimes when we want to come in in the body, everything's straight, right? We all acting all happy and stuff in front of everyone. But you know it's full of BS, right? You know you're going through uh, some dung, right? But you don't want to say nothing. Read. But are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. You full of dead man's bones and all uncleanness. Full of it. You full of it. Oh, man, I, I'm 
trying to hold myself back and not saying the S word, but you full of dung, right? Read. Even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men. You see that? Read. But within, ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Man, if you if you have this, if you have this, repent, man. Repent. You already know the judgment just being a hypocrite is death. Repent from if you don't don't be a hypocrite. If you if you need help and you think you battling with something, ask ask somebody uh, a counselor. Ask a counselor, right? Because we're going over characteristics of being a, a hypocrite, right? And you and you see, like, dang, I'm, this is this is kind of I have this characteristic, you know. I'm kind of deep into this sin, right, right here, right? Mm-hmm. Get counsel, read. Actually, uh, my bad. Go to Second Timothy chapter two, verse one. Hey, can can I get something on this real quick? Yes, sir. I want to read verse 30. Uh, hold on, let me, let me get this. Matthew chapter 23, verse 30. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. So this is how this is how the Pharisees move. So even like in today's time, when you bring it up to today, you got people that say in their head, like, man, how the hell did David fall for that? How Solomon fall for that? Man, if that was me, I would have never done that. You know what I'm saying? But God calls them, or that person, a hypocrite. Because when you read verse 12, can you, can you read that for me? Yep, verse 12. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. Uh-huh. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. You know what I'm saying? Because like the scriptures say, you know what I'm saying? Uh, basically, when you bring up yourself like that, don't don't forget that you can you can fall as well. So don't be don't don't find yourself being a hypocrite. If you feel like you're in a position where, oh, I never do that. I would have never done that. You know what I'm saying? Just humble back down because you will find yourself a hypocrite, as the scripture just said. Right. All praise to God. The book of Second Timothy, chapter three and verse one. Uh huh. This know also that in that in the last days perilous times shall come. So it says perilous times shall come. We in these last days. Perilous times is going on right now, Read. For men shall be lovers of their own souls, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, or holy. It says, first part says, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. You remember what we're going through. How people just boast themselves, right? Go to jump to verse 13. Verse 13, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. So you see that, like the Pharisees, right? Right. They wax worse and worse, right? And it says they were seducers. They seduce you with different doctrines, different lies, different, and being a hypocrite, right? And this is perilous times. This is what we're going through now, right? And it says, deceiving and being deceived. So you're going to be deceived. And you're going to have people being deceiving you, and you're going to be deceived yourself. Right? So understand that if a person's a lover of themselves, you're going to wax worse and worse. Right. You're going to have to get You're gonna have to have get rid of it. You don't want to just be all hot. Well, that scripture you just brought out, you know, uh, uh, puff yourself up or whatever, be all, get yourself up high. Boasting about yourself, you're gonna be brought down very low, right? Go to Sirach chapter six, verse two. The book of Sirach chapter six, and verse two. Extol not thyself in thy in the counsel of thy own heart. Your counsel, your own heart is thinking that oh, I got this, I got it all on my own. I don't need nobody else. I'm doing what's right. Right, I'm righteous, you know. I I don't, I don't care what that person say. They don't. Who's who's who are they? Right. right. They came in after you. Right. You don't want to hear nothing they got to say. Right. Right. It says, read it again. Extol not thyself in the counsel of thy own heart. Uh huh. That thy soul be not torn in pieces as a bull straying alone. So you you go, that, when you do that you straying alone, right? And you're gonna be torn into pieces. Right. You're gonna be torn into pieces if you're doing that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 9. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, and verse 9. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and such as be faithful in love 
shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints, and he that care for his elect. Verse 10, but the ungodly shall be punished according to their own imaginations. They should be punished according to their own imaginations. Their own imaginations. So if I imagine something in my head, I'm going to be punished according to that? I'm counseling my own self being a hypocrite. I'm going to be punished towards that? Yes. <laughs> Read. Which have it, ha, which have neglected the righteous and forsaken the Lord. So you, when you do this, you're neglecting the righteous and forsaking the Lord. If I want to just install my own self, right? Right. I want to just worry about me, right? I'm gonna be a hypocrite, whatever, right? You forsaken the Most High God, right? For whoso despises wisdom and nurture, he is miserable. You are miserable. You wonder why you're going through certain things. You wonder why you're depressed all the time. Because you're forsaking the most high God, right? And their hope is vain. Their labor's unfruitful. And their work's unprofitable. Their labor's in, they're unfruitful and their work's unprofitable. There's no profit in their work. You're going to see it. You're going you, you, you to see that they're not doing nothing and they just all talk. You're going to see it. It's unprofitable, right? Their wives are foolish and their children wicked. So... A person's been a hypocrite, right? Look at their wife and children too. See what they about. How they carry if you how they carry their household is letting you know how they how they are themselves, right? Go up go IT, pull up that article again for me. Alright, it says they try so hard to impress others. It says sense of people is easy for them to make others like them. So let's think about this. A lot of times, we know, we see this growing up, especially like in grade school, things like that, to where you see somebody trying real, real hard, you know, just to try to fit in, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing that they, mm -hmm. they don't act like that or That's they right. ain't themselves, right? right. They want to fit in, you know, be the cool kid. You try so hard to do that, but it ain't profitable for you, right? But since the person, you being yourself, you keeping these commandments, Right, you come into the church, you keep the commandments, everybody around you, they're going to like you, right? But if you're really trying to impress someone and you just, I don't know, you just, whatever, <laughs> weird or whatever, something might be going on with you, right? So uh, go to uh, Sirach chapter 20, verse tw uh, 24. The book of Sirach chapter 20 and verse 24. A lie is a foul. Is that what you want? Yep. A lie is a foul blot in a man. A lie is a foul blot in a man. So it's a stain. And so you're going to see that it's, it's a foul blot in a man, right? Read. Yeah, it is continually in the mouth of the untaught. So if a person is untaught, lies is always going to be in their mouth. Correlate that with uh, trying to impress people all the time. That person is going to be lying all the time, right? right. They're going to try to fit in so much, right? Even like uh someone that's a spy or something, right? Mm. Mm. Right? They're going to try to fit in so much. All right. Or even just yeah, it's just like a spy. They just try to fit in so much. But knowing they ain't about this truth, right? You're just going through the motions, things like that. Right? Go to, uh, yeah, keep reading. Verse 25. A thief is better than a man that is accustomed to lie. So it says a thief is better better than a man accustomed to lie. How is a thief better than a man accustomed to a lie? A thief, they'll just take something from you, right? <laughs> right. But a person that lie, like like we brought up earlier, that can destroy so many things that can get people killed with just a lie. Right. They'll take uh, it and then lie about it. Right. A lie can destroy a whole city. Read that again. Verse 25. A thief is better than a man that is accustomed to lie. But they both shall but, have this. But it says, but. But they both shall have destruction to inherit it. They, their heritage is destruction. Man, what kind of sense does that make? Your, your heritage is destruction. Right. Somebody asks you, <laughs> <laughs> what's your heritage, your culture? Destruction. destruction. <laughs> like, come on now, yes. man. Destruction. What kind, of, what kind of sense does that make, right? Verse 26. Verse 26. The disposition of a liar is dishonorable, mm -hmm. and his shame is ever with him. And that person is shameful, right? 
A wise man shall promote himself to honor with his words. So a wise person, when they're around people, they ain't got to try too hard. They ain't got to lie, right? It says a wise man should pr- pr- promote himself to honor with his words. So you think about this truth right now, right? Mm-hmm. You have people that are in this truth to where they, they have knowledge of the scriptures. When they, when they speak, a lot of people listen. They, they pr- bring forth a lot of wisdom to the people and help, help, help heal the people, right? Right. So this person is wise. And it says, and he that have understanding will please great men. So if you have this understanding right here, you're going to please great men. All right? Uh, IT, pull up that article again for me. Hypocritical people, they talk a lot and do nothing. All right? And sincere people, they always keep their promise. Sirach chapter 8, verse 3, please. They talk a lot and do nothing. This is one of the parts uh, that we always, a lot of us are usually used to when they're hypocrite. And they always talk a lot, but they don't be really be, really be about it, right? Yes, sir. Sirach chapter 8, verse 3. The book of Sirach chapter 8 and verse 3. Strive not with a man that is full of tongue, and heap not wood upon the his fire. Strive not. So strive not with a man that's full of tongue. So a person that's just full of talk all the time, you're not supposed to be striving with them. Why are you hanging out with them that just full of talk, right? And it says, and heap not wood upon his fire. So don't give wood to the fire, you know, that person that they talk to. Just how we were saying earlier, the gossip and things like that. Or if they full of rage, you know, stuff like that, you're not supposed to give them wood. Which means don't don't feed into their lies or their hypocrisy. Don't feed into it. That's what you're doing. You're fuel, fueling the fire when you feed into those things, right? Jump to verse 10. Verse 10. Kindle not the coals of a sinner. So you understand that when this person is a, a hypocrite, things like that, you already understand that they're a sinner, right? But it says, kindle not the coals of a sinner. So a lot of times, you know how hot you, know, you get... Uh, start a, a grill or whatever, and mm-hmm. put the coals on, get real, real hot, right? Mm-hmm. Don't feel this sinner, Reap. Lest thou be burnt with the flame of his fire. When you do that, you're going to be entangled with all that BS, the lies and hypocrisy. You're going to be burnt with it, and guess what your heritage going to be? Destruction. Destruction. <laughs> right? Go to Matthew chapter 23, verse tw- uh, 3. Matthew chapter 23, verse 3. Now, understand, y'all, a lot of us, a lot of us, we have these characteristics, like I've been saying earlier. A lot of us have these characteristics, and let's make sure that we get rid of this stuff, all right? Matthew chapter 23, verse 3. The book of Matthew chapter 23 and verse 3. All therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do, but do not after their works, for they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens. And so this is talking about the Pharisees, right? And grievous to be born, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves would not move them with one of their fingers. You know what that is? Uh, someone that's those, one of those leaders is just delegates, right? And just tell you to do certain things, but they won't do it themselves, right? I think it's supposed to like, there's like a difference between a boss and a, and a leader. Right, yeah. right, yeah, yeah, just exactly, exactly, a boss and a leader, right? Because a leader, they're going to be there with you. Right. They're going to be there with you, pushing with, with you, right? Read. Uh, verse 5. But all their works they do for for to be seen of men. Mm-hmm. They make broad their phylacteries. phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Ooh-wee. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. This men pleases. You being a hypocrite, you you please a man. What's the point? What is it like me being a man trying to please uh, another man? Right. Like, come on now. Like you gay? <laughs> some? <laughs> nah, I'm messing. Nah, hey, read though. Verse six. And love the uppermost rooms at feast. And the chief seats of the, in the synagogue. They love the chief seats in the synagogues. They always want to be seen. This is hey, this is the the characteristics of a Pharisee, right? They talk a lot, do nothing. These people want to be seen to men. Go to the article again for me, IT. It 
hypocritical people. They try so hard to get attention. Then the uh, uh sensitive people they 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 don't aspire to be the center of the universe. Man, this is in the, I know that uh what's the like the class clown back in the world, grade mm-hmm. school, things like that. Yeah. So you being something that you're not, that hey, that's something that what? He's he's being a hypocrite. He not being his true self. Why lie and act like you like you are somebody? Like you know, what's the point? Right. What's the point in trying to really impress people? What's the point? You know, that's how society is. We want to have like the latest uh sneakers, things like that, just mm-hmm. to try and impress people. Impress your wife, you know. Keep doing that. Impress your wife all the time. You know, that's who you need to be impressing. Make sure you get looking nice and good up for them. It's something that a lot of people we go through, right? Uh, Colossians chapter two verse eight. I know a lot of times we pull this scripture uh, for holidays and all that, and uh, different doctrines, things like that. But yeah, this applies. Read the book of Colossians chapter two and verse eight. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So beware of this. Beware of all these characteristics. Beware of all the gossiping. Beware of it, because it's not after Christ. Beware of this, because they speak, all of them speaking lies. All right? Sirach chapter 21, verse 2. The book of Sirach chapter 21. You said verse 2. Yeah, start at 1. Sirach chapter 21 and verse 1. My son, has thou sinned? Are you a hypocrite? Read. Do so no more. Let's stop being a hypocrite. You. I'm talking to you. Stop being a hypocrite. Read. But ask pardon for my, thy former sins. So ask pardon for thy former sins. Repent from it. Ask the most high for forgiveness. Read. Flee from sin as the fa- from the face of a serpent. And you don't flee from it, what's going to happen? For if thou comest too near it. If you want to come to that uh, strive with a person that's uh, full of uh, tongue. Full of lies, right? Read. It will bite thee. It's going to bite you. It's going to bite you in the, uh, the butt. All right? Read. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion, slaying the souls of men. It's going to be slaying you. It's going to kill you. It's going to kill you. Job chapter 15, verse 34. The book of Job chapter 15 and verse 34. So remember, y'all. The, the the title of this class is The Fundamentals of a Being a Hypocrite. All right, so all these characteristics, these fundamentals or whatever, make sure you know them and, and see the signs. See the signs of what people are going through. See if they see, see if they doing this. But first, see if you're doing it yourself. Right. That's the first thing. Job chapter 15, verse 34. Job chapter 15 and verse 34. Mm-hmm. For the congregation of the hypocrites. Of the what? Of the hypocrites. Uh-huh. Shall be desolate. Uh-huh. And fire shall consume the tabernacles of the robbery. Uh-huh. They conceive mischief mm-hmm. and bring forth vanity. And their belly uh, what's that? prepareth deceit. They belly, they, they, they preparing deceit. They preparing lies. Fire cons- shall consume the tabernacles of robbery. They conceive mischief. It bring forth vanity. You see these people today, they always bring forth lies and hypocrisy. Don't be as one of them. Go to First Peter chapter 2, verse 1. The book of First Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies. And what? And hypocrisies. Mm-hmm. And envies and evil speaking. So it says, laying all all this aside. You lay all this aside. It's giving you uh, certain things that you need to lay aside, right? It says, and hypocrisies and envy, envies and evil speaking. Lay these aside, right? But verse 2, let's see what that say. Verse 2. As newborn babes desire to censor milk of the word. That ye may grow thereby. So you mean to tell me I come to this truth and I still have this spirit of a hypocrite? You know, I still need to repent from it and still become as newborn babes? Why? Because you die daily, right? Like Paul said, we die daily. Right. So you have to die daily. You have to get rid of it. 
all these different things, get rid of it, the hypocrisy and everything, all right? And evil speaking, the gossiping, all that BS. You hear something? Okay. All right, all praises. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.